to the cloud. Okay, got it. I think we're good. We're recording, we're live, and we're good to go. So Seth, let everybody know who you are and why this is so important right now. Cool. Well, hi, everybody. And probably most of you watching are probably parents. So my name is Seth Perler. I am an executive function coach, speaker. I wear a lot of hats in the executive function world, which means that um, I help students usually elementary, middle, high school, and college, usually middle, high school, and college, um, uh, learn how to navigate school when they're struggling with school. So they might be struggling with procrastination, motivation, organization, time management, not getting things turned in, not being able to start, not knowing what's for homework. So these are students who are, um, you know, they're looking like they're not, quote, successful in school. And how do we execute executive function is about execution how do we execute the important tasks and obviously with uh, executive function we use executive function for all kinds of things so they're going to execute in terms of the things that are fun for them their video games or their legos or their um, hobbies or their social life or their sports life or whatever is their interests but when it comes to execution on some of the important things that they find daunting or challenging or um, not as interesting, uh, then it's really hard. Where some students really pick up great systems, these kids struggle with that. So what I do is I help those students, and then I help teachers and parents and other people. And then the summit, TIFOS, the Executive Function Online Summit, uh, is a place where we have um, where we have a bunch of really awesome experts like you that teach from the heart. Uh, to parents about something really important from your perspective about how to support these kiddos. Love that. I love that. And when, when you think about executive functioning and you think about parents, some teachers, caregivers out there, and they get frustrated with their kid, with their teen, what, what is some of your best advice that you can give about that? Because a lot of the struggles that I'm seeing, that I'm hearing about in parent coaching sessions, that I'm hearing about when I'm on social media is, well, why can't they just do the thing? Why can't they just clean up their room? Why can't they just take a shower or get their work done or do their chores? Like what's preventing? Because that's the biggest thing is that initiating of the task. Like what is the biggest thing you want parents, caregivers, teachers to know about that, about that problem that we're seeing? I mean, I guess the biggest thing that I want them to know is that there's a difference between a can't and a won't. And the when we assume that something is a won't and it's a can't, or when we assume the opposite, the, and we're misunderstanding the situation. So in any situation, in any relationship with anybody, any human being, uh, we want to be understanding what's really going on. The more we can really understand what's going on, the more effectively we're going to communicate and help each other. And um, so the can't and the won't. So the can't is when somebody can't do something, you know, for example, you're wearing glasses right now. I have my glasses right here and I'm not wearing them because I'm being vain and while well, they're reading glasses and anyhow, <laughs> I can't see, for example, on the tab behind you, like the, the text it's, I cannot, no matter how hard I try, yeah. it's not a won't. It's not that I won't squint hard enough to read it. I can't see it. Ditto. And right, right. So that's a can't. And um, what we often assume is that the student won't, that they're being willful, that they're not trying hard enough, that they're not motivating themselves, that they're just procrastinating. You said, why don't you just? That term, why don't you just? It sounds so simple, but it's not. It's actually, uh, it's a can't. They can't. Now, here's what's going to happen. The parent or the teacher is going to say, but I've seen him do it before. Hmm. Or they're going to say, but I know you can do it. Or they're going to say, because I, but I know you're bright. You know, I know. But the fact is, is that within the context of that moment, they can't. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, might mean that's where, that's where now it starts to get more complicated. So we can go down that rabbit hole in a minute if you want. But the most important thing, what you asked me, that I want, parents and teachers to know when they're feeling frustrated is that it's probably a can't and not a won't. And if you approach it as a won't, you're, you're not going to get anywhere. And in fact, you might that you may go backwards because they might feel shamed. They might feel misunderstood. They might feel not seen, not heard. Um, they might feel like, well, why am I going to go to that person later if I need help? You know, they're, they, so you, you really want to really think, okay, let's assume that they are doing the best they can do in this moment and that that it's a can't and then ask the question 
well, how can we support them to get the skills that they need to do the thing we're asking them to do? So for example, um, you and I just started, we just started this Facebook Live, right? Right. And we walked through like the process of how to do it. Now, the only reason I know how to do this is because I've done like 20 of them this past week. I've never done them before and I messed up a bunch of them and now I have a skill set. Then you and I just went through it. This and I had zero skill set, right? My first, I had someone else do it for me, but I've never done it myself. Right. And right. then on Instagram, you have a ton of skills. I don't even know how to log in on my Instagram. And I said to you, we can do your Instagram today if you show me how to get on it or something like, because I don't, I don't have those skills. These are skills. Like to be able to self-start is a skill. Now we might not think of it that way. We might just think, oh, well, the person's just motivates themselves. No, they've actually have developed a lot of little skills to self-start on something so that these kids haven't learned those skills yet. So my thing is like, um, I don't try to motivate my kids. My question is, how do you do the important thing even if you're not motivated to do it? I don't really care if you're, I don't care if I'm motivated to pay my taxes or not. I better pay them or I'm gonna have consequences. So it doesn't, motivation for a lot of things, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter. The question is, how do I empower you to have skills to do the thing when you're not motivated? Like what kind of tips and tricks and little things and and skills can we consciously say oh i have a tool bag i can do this rather than randomly maybe sometimes they do it sometimes they don't so why can't you just clean the room well maybe they look at the room and they're like and they can't articulate this to you but maybe they're like i don't even know where to start yep. like, do you start with a floor do you start with the socks do you start <laughs> with you know the corner like is there a type of thing you start with, you know? And then how long is it gonna take? Like, this is gonna take me forever. I got more interesting things to do. Like, it, it, just the the um, the nervous system is experiencing overwhelm. Like, they're looking at the room saying, well, I can't just clean my room because I don't know where to start. It's stressful and I don't have the skills to do that and I'm overwhelmed, so I'm not gonna do it. And so it, it's, and you can look at it and say, but it would take them five minutes. They don't know that. Mm -mm. They don't have the skill set to know that. You know, but if we can go in and say, okay, look, can you just, you, I talk about chunking. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of ranting here, but no, I talk about go for chunking it. By, time, by time and by task. Like you can say, okay, cool. And I use false choices a lot, but in this case you could say, cool. Um, look, I know you don't, <laughs> I, I know you're not necessarily wanting to clean your room right now, but you need to do something. I'll tell you what, can you clean for one minute, three minutes or five minutes? And they say, okay, I'll clean for one minute. And you just get it started. Sometimes they'll clean for 18 minutes because the momentum got going. They didn't know right. where to start, but it wasn't overwhelming to think, oh, I can clean my room for one minute. But, you know, you can also do by task. Okay, look, can you just pick up the shoes? That's it for right now. Just let's start with just the shoes on the floor into the closet. But that's a chunk that is concrete. It's not abstract. So, you know, the emotional regulation with can I do that thing is like, Oh, I can handle that task, but can I clean my room? Can, you can't just necessarily clean your room if you don't have a brain that systematizes well. You don't know where to start. It's a complete mess, and you're like, it. Re they really may not know where to start. They also may have something else on their mind, a social thing, an emotional thing. They may be uncomfortable in their body. They may um, be... Um, maybe they're sick or they have a sore throat or whatever you know, who knows but the point is 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 it can't or won't and what else could be going on you know so i think those are a great insight and i think the the thing that i hear often from parents uh, and i totally get it is then how do we not use their adhd or their undeveloped executive functioning skills as an excuse to say oh well it's okay if they don't clean their room. It's okay if they don't shower for four days because it's, you know, there, it, there's a deficit. And then it's like, we're kind of making an excuse for it. How do we not go into that realm and of excusing great, it? That's a great question because if, if you go to that end of the pendulum, then you're, you have learned helplessness, you have enabling, you have dysfunction, you have maladaptive things you, you, your kid's learning and they're not learning independence they're not learning agency so we th that is absolutely not what you or i would say mm -hmm. is is that you, you know okay well then just don't worry about it i'll do it for you no or mm -hmm. just don't worry about it um no they absolutely must begin learning these skills so um yeah i mean there's there this this gets really into where more nuanced coaching or, or counseling might be helpful because 
I can't say I can say some blanket statements here, but I can't say other blanket statements here because it depends on the situation. But the point is, is you I guess a good way to put it is you want to s figure out where they're at, what they can and can't do. Now, this isn't are they capable of doing the thing like um, mechanically or intellectually this is like within the context of the situation now that's hard to know because you don't know what's going on inside someone so you have to figure out what's what's going on but essentially either way we want to um, regulate the nervous system first have connection first and this takes time it's not just you got to clean your room we got to be out the door you got to get your stuff we're going on a plane in two hours you know it you, you have to like this stuff takes time so you have to regulate get co-regulated and like connect first and then you have to chunk and help scaffold them so that that was where i was headed is scaffolding you have to scaffold them from where they're at to notch it up to notch it up to notch it up to notch it up what's one of what's one of your hobbies dr lockhart um let's see probably riding my bike and when did you learn when i was seven and do you still try to improve your skill? Are you like a casual rider uh, on like a beach bike? Or are you like riding a, uh, a high, high end mountain bike or something? What, what no, you... just like casual, but it's something that although I enjoy it, I haven't done it in a long time. Okay. But it's, it's kind of a hobby. Yes. It's still a hobby though. And when you, when you started learning, you get like the basics, but then you, you can't go beyond where you can go. So you just like notch it up and notch it up and notch it up. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's scaffolding. Like if you go yes. into the bike store store and you're like, Hey, I got a, a flat and, and how do I fix this? You know, they're going to like teach you something. You learn it now. You have that skill. Oh, Hey, I need my, my wheels to be, they're unbalanced. What do you do about that? Okay. Well, here's what you do with the spokes, you know? Um, hey, my gear is a little bit off. So you, you've built over years like little skill sets, right. right? But it's been scaffolded, and that's the can't and the won't, you know. So the same thing is you got to understand that they're only capable of doing what they're capable of doing. So take them there and help notch them up. You definitely want to push them. You want them to get uncomfortable. Meaning, I do want to push my students outside their comfort zone. But if I push them too far, they're not going to want to work with me. Mm -hmm. But if I don't push them into this past that comfort zone they're not going to grow so there's that area that we're working with now for parents it's harder in a way because your area to get there it like they're they your kids have way more excuses for you way more ability to push your buttons you know um so it's it's different but still that's where you're trying to go as a parent is how do we push them past their comfort zone you have to do that or they will not grow but if you push them too far and your zone may be that big but you got to yeah. find that sweet spot to figure out okay that my kid needs to independently learn how to clean their room and um that's where we're headed it may take months it may take years but that's where we're headed what's the next little tiny skill we can add to that and so that there can be some independence Love it. And I think it's important for parents to remember too, that don't allow the skill building to destroy the relationship in the process. Don't get so focused on them cleaning their room, tidying up, picking up the towel off the floor and not, you know, doing their dishes that every time they interact with you, that they think it's going to be a fight, an argument or a lecture, because then they're not going to want to connect. And then they're definitely not going to want to do the task. And I think that we sometimes lose sight of that. Like, well, if I'm not constantly nagging them, then they'll never do it. I'm like, well, they're not doing it anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. And there's also space for, there's a term called uh, logical consequences. Now, the, the whole area of consequences and punishment and rewards and all this stuff is very muddy and very mixed. So let me be very clear about this. We do have logical consequences in life and you can creatively come up with logical consequences. Like if, if uh, there, there's a lot of ways to look at things, but one way is let's say your kid really hates doing dishes. You know, you could actually think maybe they can do something else that they don't hate as much or that they like more. And that's their thing. Like you don't, there are certain things where I've worked with families and we come up with something and it's like, cool, let's let that be their part of the contribution, you know, um, that that's fine. Like you got to really like sometimes back up and be like, whoa, do we really mm -hmm. have to put this much um, mental energy or argumentative energy into a thing? Like we can maybe sometimes change things, but sometimes there's other cases where you can get really creative and let's say it, I'm just going to use the dish example, but you could say, you know what, you didn't do your dishes or do the dishes or whatever the responsibility was. 
Um, and, but th this has to do with like, are you regulated emotionally? But let's, I'm just coming up with something, but let's say you said, you know what? You're going to have your own dishes for now on. You get one plate, one fork, one knife, one spoon, one cup. <laughs> it's yours. If it's dirty, then um, too bad. You, you clean it and I'm, I'm done. You know, you're 16 years old. I'm not doing this for you anymore. And like, that's a boundary that's like, you're saying, I, I can't, I can't, I have a life. I need you to show up and, and I'm not going to let you fill the sink with this. And I got to, you know, we have our own boundaries in lives too. So there's a time when you can be like, okay, that's yours. And you're paying for it with your allowance or whatever, you know, I'm just say, I'm just making something up, but, um, but this is not in a contemptuous mean or angry. This is a, a regulated, Hey, here's a boundary. Look, this is, this is a natural consequence. And so th there's a time to let people fall, fail, have an experience, not in about it. nobody want. And this is, I think so hard for parents because we don't want to see, we don't want to see our kids struggle. But it's so important. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they don't learn to do X, Y, and Z before they move out of the house, whenever they end up moving out, like the, it really is going to be way more problems and and consequences in the future. So the struggle is important. The struggle on the bicycle, you know, like to you know, you have to. Ha you, well, now they have those cool bikes where the they don't even have training wheels. The kids can learn so early. But the point is, is that we we have to struggle to figure things out and to learn and grow all of us do um so i know it's really hard with the nervous system of a parent to be like ah if i let go then everything's going to fall apart well sometimes that's okay when it's safe and okay to let that happen let it happen and really think mindfully how can you help your kid connect the dots i think that's another big one too a lot of kids with executive function challenges don't have good future thinking and don't really connect consequences and say, oh, this is a consequence, good or bad consequence of my actions, you know, and we want them to develop that metacognition, that reflection and introspection to say, but that's where you and I and the parent can come in and say, oh, I noticed that this happened. What, do you remember what happened before, you know, and, and help them connect dots. That's really important in this whole conversation too. Absolutely. Right, I'm, and I'm like and going in a lot of directions. No, but I think it's absolutely important because again, we think that because having clean dishes and a wipe down countertop with no crumbs is important that we push it onto our kids and teens thinking they think it's important too, when they might be blind to it, they may totally be unaware of it. And they don't have that same priority of being on time, cleaning things up, wiping crumbs. I mean, they don't, they don't care. They may not even care. So I think we're unnecessarily punishing them for something that they may be kind of oblivious to even. So so Seth, this is great. I think what, um, tell well, I want to, every I'm curious about what you think though, about the, yeah. the, um, the logical consequences thing too. Yeah. I think I've been seeing a lot of chatter on social media about, um, you know, different, different schools of people saying no consequences, don't dish out consequences. It's too harsh. Kids don't learn from it. And people who say, absolutely, you know, give them consequences and punish the heck out of them. Like there's very, unnecessarily kind of a debate about it. And I think it's important for kids. I, I agree with having natural consequences because it naturally occurs. You know, you forgot to bring your jacket, and so now you're cold, for example. We're not gonna rush back home to get it because you're cold in the movie theater. That's a natural consequence. You didn't do it, you didn't plan ahead. The natural consequence is now you're uncomfortable. Um, logical consequences is that because you chose to dilly-dally getting ready for our bath time, then we've, you've um, ran out of time to get a story. That's the logical consequence of, you know, now it's too late. Now it's bedtime. And I don't think that's overly harsh. I don't think that's punishment based. I think that's like, no, because you chose to do this, then this is what happened. And really teaching them how to then manage their time, how to plan ahead and doing that with them so that they can start to learn it. But I think the problem is that so often we see it and we're like, oh, you lost your story. I'm taking it away. I'm taking away your phone. And then people think that's logical consequences when that's actually punishment. Right. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with that. And I think that kids need to learn that just and, like we and, do. And to wrap that idea up, the, thing, the, pro, the problem with punishment is, is it changing behavior? A, B, mm -hmm. is it giving skills that they need? No, that are at the core of the problem, probably. Right. No, it just causes pain. 
It causes a disruption in the and family and the relationship and it causes disconnection. Exactly. So it doesn't work and it works maybe for the moment because then it's right. so painful for them, but then and they get, gain back the privilege and it go right back to old right. behavior. Yeah, work in the moment, but it didn't address the issue. Yeah. Right. Right. So, You're okay, this is awesome. You're fun to talk to, awesome. to, talk to too. <laughs> so tell me, uh, tell us about TFOS, the Executive Functioning Online Summit, and why do people need to know about this and why would it be beneficial to them? Yep. So this is it. This is the the site and um, it is, there should be a link right here for you all. And yes. you pop your name in here and you click register free. It's starting in 10 hours. Oh my gosh, where did the time go? But you can check out all these speakers. There are all these um, amazing uh, experts. Sorry that my page isn't loading properly um, on executive function. So we have three days, 30 speakers. And these people are just teaching parents all about executive function. And there you are. There I am. <laughs> and um, that you can learn more about it here, but basically, and then there's, if you wanna buy it, there's a option to buy, but the weekend is free and it's three days. Really the intention is to really dive in to all these concepts. It's super overwhelming. Like by the end of the weekend, your head's spinning like in any conference, but as the mud settles out, you, you gain clarity. So these are people who I really look for speakers who are coming from here, who are really heartfelt so that's my main thing. I don't want people who are overly clinical. I want people who are coming from here and who are like really talking to parents. Uh, a lot of therapists and teachers come to this, but it's for parents. And um, so, yeah, that's uh, my brain's a little bit loopy. I'm on my third interview today, but it's, it is designed to help people really go deep and really uh, figure out sort of like what you and I were just talking about things that are going on underneath the surface or behind the scenes so that they can better help and support their child so that their kid can have a great, great now, a great childhood and a great future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad to be part of it. And I'm for those of you who want to check it out, it starts tomorrow. Early bird registration ends tonight at midnight, correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, you have three days all weekend to binge and absorb as much as you possibly can. And if you want lifetime access, that's when you can purchase the packet, the package and get um, a hold of that. But the link is down below in the um, comments underneath, wherever that is on here. Um, and you can sign up and uh, be a part of it and join the conversation. So, so thank you, Seth. Thanks for your time today. You're welcome. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for doing what you do. Yes. I appreciate that. For thank you. Kids and, family. and so thanks, thanks to all of you for joining us and um, share with a friend, let people know that this is going on and we hope to see you on the inside in this weekend. So thank you. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of also throughout the weekend, you can come to the um, the speaker sessions, but I'll be doing a lot of uh, Facebook lives and stuff in the group and um, we can come back on your page. Or s I, ju I just wanna have fun with speakers and serving people. Mm -hmm. So if you all ha wanna get involved in that way and ask questions or anything, please join us with that too. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So now my skill set, I have Facebook right. live and zoom, and now we got to end it and we're going to end live. So I think I got this. <laughs> All right. So stop recording. <laughs>